I recently received three rather unique items in the mail. The first one was a 3D printed Terminator head with integrated red LEDs for the eyes that light up if an appropriate voltage is applied to the built-in wires. The second one was a picture frame that would light up as well and thus present a pixel art of a space invader. And the third one was an 8x8 LED matrix, which revealed the secret of those objects. Instead of using plain old wire to create electrical connections, those objects utilize another, more exotic material, which is conductive 3D printing filament. The seller promises a resistivity of 0.006 ohm centimeter, which would equal a resistance of 2.5 ohm for a 10 centimeter long piece of the 1.75 millimeter filament, which is much lower than other conductive filaments. But how easy is it to reach this conductivity? And how much power can this material handle before it melts? Let's find out. After unpacking the spool of filament, I noticed that the material is quite flexible and hard to break by hand, if we compare it to regular PLA filaments. And before doing any electrical tests, I firstly replaced the current filament spool of my Delta 3D printer with this new material in order to find out how easy it is to print with. I simply created a small cylinder in 123D design, imported it into the Repetiho software, changed the slicer's headings according to the manufacturer's recommendation, sliced it and started the printing process. And surprisingly, it printed pretty well for first tests. So I created a bigger cylinder with 123D design, which I wanted to use to find out how the resistance depends on the infill ratio. But no matter how often I try to print this time, this cylinder never worked out. The reason is probably the Bowden extruder system of my 3D printer, which cannot push the semi-flexible filament with sufficient pressure and thus also clogs the hot ends. But even without successful prints, we can still test the electrical characteristics of the material. Now simply pushing the probes of a multimeter onto a piece of the filament will most certainly deliver wrong results, because the contact resistance between the probes and filament is higher than the resistance of the filament itself. To solve this, the manufacturer recommends silver paste, which I do not have. So we'll use another tactic that the manufacturer also recommends, heat. For first test, I cut two pieces of filament to a length of 5cm, got myself a white LED as a test subject and heated the filament up with a 100 degrees Celsius hot airflow. Once the filament was soft, I pressed in the leads of the LED on one side and a piece of silvered copper wire on the other side. But unfortunately, this setup did not work for me at all, which made calculating the resistance pretty unnecessary. So I tried a similar heat method, just a bit more extreme, with my 350 degrees Celsius hot soldering iron. This time the LED did light up, but very dim and randomly, which means that the contact resistance was still too high. So I went with a mechanical method that the manufacturer used as well with his 3D printed objects. Screw terminals. For that, I used four M5 bolts with two lock washers, two washers and a nut each to secure the 5cm filament pieces in place. Finally, this setup did the trick and resulted in a total resistance of 440 ohms for a 10cm long piece. To get more accurate results, I placed a single 10cm piece between two bolts and directly connected it to my lab bench power supply in order to let different constant currents flow through the filament. After I recorded dozens of values, I started calculating the resistance, which reached a minimum of 13 ohms at 150mA, right before it increased again. And after this point, while increasing the current continuously, the filament slowly heated up and broke through its hotspots at around 1 watt of wasted power. Furthermore, the sent examples of the manufacturer are also not perfect. The Terminator head, for example, possesses a total resistance of around 18 ohms. 
but it is noticeable that the contact area always creates a hotspot, which proves that the contact resistance is most of the time the culprit. As a last test, I compared the data signal sent from the Arduino with the same signal after traveling through the filament. And the result was actually pretty good. No complaints here. So all in all, this filament is useful for low current applications, as well as for sending data through your 3D print, but definitely not for bigger current loads due to its hardly conquerable contact resistance. I hope you liked this video and maybe learned something new as well. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, stay creative and I will see you next time.